Bless you, Lord. Bless your holiness. Bless your righteousness. Bless your faithfulness, goodness, your pure love, and endless wisdom. May you comfort your people. Mosin be the support. <laughs> but be the everlasting strength, an increase. I'm praying that we more than be comforted, we be strengthened as mighty way to overcome all things, especially for your kingdom's sake, for your glory, in your name, so you can rejoice and receive your reward as your people who is a willing wife and full of understanding. Thank you, Lord. Read some scripture, Revelation 11, 15 now. The seventh angel sounded the trumpet. There were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world to become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. He will reign forever and ever. Amen. The 24 elders who were seated on their throne before God found their faces to worship God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty. Who the one who is who was because you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Bless you, Lord. The nation were angry, mm -hmm. and your wrath to come. The time has come for judging the dead, for rewarding your servants, the prophet, your sins, and so those who reverence your name, both small and great. And for destroy those who destroy the earth, then God's temple in heaven was opened. And within the temple was a singly ark with covenant. Their king flashed lightning, rubbing pearls, thunder, earthquake, the great hailstorm. Fast forward to 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven say, No, have come. The salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accused them before God the other night, having hurled them, they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not allow their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you will dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil had gone down to you. He's filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Fast forward. The 15th chapter. In the beginning. And I saw in heaven another great and marvelous sign. Seven angels with the seven last plague. Last because with them God's wrath is completed. The soul will look like a sea of glass mixed with fire. And stand beside the sea those who have been victorious over the best of the image, over the numbers named. The held harps given them by God and sung the song of Moses, the servants of God, and the song of the Lamb. Green and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nation will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. After this I looked, 
a heaven, the temple that is, the tabernacle, the testimony was opened. Hallelujah. And the same plate, not good after that, but what a wonderful progression of God's purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father. 19. 19. In the beginning. The bird was sounded like a roar of great multitudes in heavenly shouting. Roar of great multitudes. Have you heard army ready to charge? Sometimes they encourage themselves. Amen. <laughs> Keep a roar. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Roar. Have you roared in your life? I encourage you to go to the mountain top to roar a little bit. <laughs> City. But it's so liberating. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> of this I heard what sounded like the Lord of great multitudes in heaven and shouted. Oh, you can't go to the down the waterfall. <laughs> Ooh, you know, so. The waterfall is pretty mighty, you know. Splash the water, just rolls waterfall, you know, just deafening. And then, how that thing? Said, Hallelujah! I can't use my tongue. <laughs> Road. Salvation and glory and power beat long power cut the top on the rocks, you know. But true and just is the judgment. See they welcome his judgment. <laughs> they celebrate judgment. They want his judgment. It's righteous. It's yeah. righteous. There's a vindication. And you heard weak minds for some shallow questions. God don't judge this, God don't judge that. God judges everything. <laughs> because you are not on the right side with God. <laughs> you don't know what's the rich reward of your salvation, maybe. Your higher standing is for the world, maybe. You are not winning yet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I want my land. I want my destiny. I want my inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and sure, my sin will be forgiven. Sure, all my mistakes will be canceled. Amen. <clears throat> but I will not approach. This God with justice and judgment with a sin consciousness. <laughs> and we'll make sure that I am a worthy son. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Ready to receive my inheritance, my lot, my portion. For in two pleasant places, I am a boundary line. For in pleasant places and the holy ones in this land. Amen? It's a delight in my heart. Hallelujah. Just like a father delighting your little ones. Amen. Hallelujah. A king delighting his what well, subjects one word. A season. Amen. Hallelujah. A father delighting his children. Amen. Who will not delight? A shepherd delighting the sheep. A garden delighting his is a planting. Amen. A farmer delighting his harvest. Who will not delight? Amen. Hallelujah. God is a perfect. God is good. God have forgive our sin, does not count our sins against us. Bless the Lord. To no one by the own merit or birth, or own works, can consider righteous before God. All have been led astray. Hallelujah. But we now found our Lord Jesus Christ. He is paying the way. His idea of life, the word become flesh. 
So that same word can dwell in you richly, form the life of Christ in you. Amen. Hallelujah. The hope of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The hope of glory. <laughs> Said he had condemned the Greek prostitute, corrupt the earth by her dollarship. That's bad one. It's a wench on her. The blood of servants. Again they shouted. The smoke from her go up forever ever. Hallelujah. Then continue hallelujah. You know. Praise our God, all oh, your his servants who fear him, both small and great. Why? In six now. Hallelujah for our God, Lord God reigns. Let us rejoice, be glad, and give him glory. The wedding of the Lamb's come. His bride has made herself ready. Filing in bride clean was given to her. Standing for the righteous and the saints. Let's give her on them. There are things to be celebrated. And the world cannot rob us away. Hallelujah. This is a history of man. It's but a, a small record <laughs> of all the story of God. For the ages to come, we belong to him. And we will celebrate and, and glory in Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this life and many troubles, many tribulations, many, many sorrows and setbacks. We are fully ignorant or sometimes just pure mistake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, evil does not leave us alone. Amen. It's elements in the side of life. Us. But shall we deny the goodness of the Lord? Shall we use this short span of time to define the internal salvation of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we deny the sure testimony of the Lord, the declaration of the good news? Amen. The internal kingdom, the rich and the sure the sonship. Shall we shall not? Talk with me. And then build the conversation to the team and others. Efficient means. Efficient means. Two chapters. A oh, one chapter, actually. Okay. This is my prayer. Two portions. <coughs> In 11, 111 said, In him, allow me to read with the with big passion. Like a Paul would declare in the gospel. <clears throat> in him, we were also chosen, have been predestined according to the plan of him. Who oh, had everything in conformity with the purposes of will. In order that we, who are the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of glory, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in Him with a seal. The promise of the Holy Spirit, who is deposited, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of His glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord and your love for all the saints, I will not stop giving thanks for you. Remember you, my birth. I kept asking the God our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may know the hope to which He called you, the riches His glorious inheritance in the sand. It is incompatible with power 
philosophically. That power is like the working of mighty strength, which exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him the right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is the body. The fullness in him fulfills everything in every way. Fast forward three chapter. In seven. Another. In two. Let's start with two. Three. Surely, you have heard about the administration of God's grace that are given to me for you. That is a mystery made known to me by revelation. And I've already written briefly, reading this saying you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to man in other generations, that has not been revealed by the Spirit, but has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and the prophets. This mystery revealed, you're the foundation. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, member together for one body, and share together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a certain this gospel by the gift God's grace given me through the workings of power. Although I am less than the list of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the ministration of this mystery which for ages of past was kept hidden in God who created everything. His intent was that now through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms, according to the internal purpose which accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Him and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. As you, therefore, not be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted, and established in love, may have a power to get with all the sins, to grasp all wide and long and high and deep in the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of all the forms of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is a work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever and God's people say together with me Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you to you, brother. Anyone I pray actually. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the gospel. Mm.
the gospel. The gospel. Lord, we thank you for your for your love, for revealing your love to us, Lord, and revealing the way to us. I pray that our hearts would be ready to be taken past our secure place of safety, And that our, with all of our being, with all of our heart, that we would just leap and be ready to tread water, <laughs> be ready to trust in you, Jesus. We glorify you, we honor you, we bring all praise to you, Lord. There is no one else in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. <coughs> Let's take a, a, a broad look at the gospel again, this gospel of glory. And uh, I don't really feel the freedom yet to continue on with the foundational teachings, not as a restriction, but more as uh, an effort to, to stay in alignment with this sounds obvious and justifying but it's not just really to see what the flow of the spirit is mm. um, with as much as the Lord has been doing in, in our hearts and in our midst over the last month or so um, I want us to really continue to, to personally evaluate and not as a judgment against ourselves, but just really consider what God is doing and that it's, I wish we would have had recorded what Elijah shared the other night on Wednesday. I might have it. Mm. Nice. That I, would have be, to, I have to look, I have to dig it out. I'll, okay. I'll check. I think word for word, it's probably pretty valuable to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. God's move is really exciting. God's move, the move of God is very experiential uh, in the inner man and many times in the, the, the outward expression of life through soulish excitement, soulless conviction. I don't necessarily use the word soulish in that context in a negative way, but the soul is very, uh, Malleable, it can be moved. It can be swayed, uh, and it's God designed it to be that way. It's the way the, supposed, the soul is supposed to work. That's also why the soul is not supposed to run the show. <laughs> it's kind of a a volatile being. And you know, we're reading here. Cheryl prayed earlier about the reign of Christ from within. That is the that is the first major sign of the coming, the physical return of Christ is when God's people allow him by his spirit to reign first in their lives. It's actually what the apostles said was going to happen. That's what Paul uh, in Romans said would define those who are God's sons. So I think we've come far along enough together to not have to describe salvation uh, and the work of God in the context of whether or not someone spends eternity in heaven or hell. Those are, those are realities. But they're not real. They are, they are the results of other things. 
They're not the ends of our pursuit. Um, those that end, it, it, the, putting those things as an end, also completely uh, neglects the what God has expressed through the ages and through the scriptures in particular about what the new heavens and the new earth are. Who will walk upon the new heavens and earth? Who will exist there? What will the government be like? How will the world be ruled at that time? And those pictures show us that there are those that are outside the city. People. And that there is also a place of judgment. So I'm not trying to, to detail that imagery. Much of it we don't have a lot of clarity on. The, the scriptures are fairly <clears throat> vague. We can be assured of the judgment of God and the, the righteous nature and just nature of God's judgment. Um, But in reference to the things that uh, Elijah mentioned, and I'm just going to hit some highlights. When I, for instance, press for us to continue on, press into the Lord, it's not to maintain some emotional experience or soulish fulfillment or religious excitement. I don't want to actually invalidate any of those. They're all valid. But they need to have... They need to take their proper place in um, the work of God in our midst. So it, it's not always going to identify itself or ex be expressed in that way. How then do we maintain the, the pace of God, the pace of the work of the Lord? My impression here is that the Lord wants to continue to do a work that is from glory to glory. It's just really hard to use phrases and words that are very common to Christian language and even to our community. We basically write them off in our minds because they're very familiar to us. And um, But I believe that God will continue to be faithful to do to use another phrase, exceedingly and abundantly more mm -hmm. than all that we ask or imagine. You know, I'm reminded of the the the, the triple crown race of Secretariat. Mm -hmm. That was literally a prophetic imagery. And you know, the the, the horse had a different heart. <clears throat> it didn't have a heart like any other heart. And that's the same heart upon which God says and through the apostles that he would inscribe his ways of life, his laws. He always wanted to do that. That's something that was projected from the Old Testament. That was something that the law exposed in man. Was that knowledge in your mind and even a mental ascension and agreement to practice God's laws would never produce the fruit that God wants. Why? Because it had to be something that happened in the heart of man. Mm. And, uh, and it needed to be expressed in a particular and peculiar way. Unfortunately, the people of God have never really come together to operate in that way. Mostly in the latter years after the after the, the, the New Testament church was founded uh, after the ascension of Christ and uh, following the day of Pentecost and ascending out of the, the 12 in power to proclaim the truth of the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, others like Paul and Barnabas and and and. The others, Timothy and others that were joined in in those early days to begin to lay the foundations for the household of God and the culture of God, they were battling some really, really heavy traditional mindsets of how God works. It wasn't really different than, you know, what we're dealing with today. Um, we just basically say that we... we, we put our place in the same place that the Pharisees and Sadducees and the religious leaders of the day 
were in at the time of Christ and said, well, we're not like our forefathers. We know more than them. We saw what they experienced. We learned from their experiences. We would not make those mistakes because we have their experiences to know that we won't make those mistakes. And God has throughout the, the history of of the history of God's people, whether that be via the, the nation of Israel, you know, or, you know, we can see historically now that there were very evidently moves of the spirit of God in other nations at other times that are not recorded in scripture. Mm -hmm. Some of those are at least looked at in scripture, Nineveh and some of these other places where there was a revival that came from God and people's hearts were changed toward God. It happened in Babylon. It happened in, in the, in the, the, during the, per, the, the, the Persian Empire, those were, you know, pagan empires in which there were revivals of God's work. And there were those who were said to, to become Jews because of the, the work of God in their midst. And so that, you know, the sentiment of, of some of the apostles teaching, I want to briefly look at some of Paul's teaching as he traveled. Obviously, he was sent to the Gentiles, but that was one of the great revelations that came to him was that, wow, God, it wasn't just about including something that wasn't included. It, you know, the mystery of God is not just that the, it's the Gentiles too. That's not the mystery. That's, that's, part of the, that's part of what was revealed through the mystery. But it's not the mystery. The mystery is the, 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 the revelation of the relationship of sonship in the Father's house. And God was breaking the molds early on in Israel's history when the law was first established. The people would not basically give it unto God so he took something for himself that was the tribe of Levi and there was this separation that took place but God wanted all of his people to be his they turned away from him at the mountain so he set something apart for himself not because he was angry and you know but because he wanted to show God's people what his heart was God is so intentional about not forcing something you know we, we we see god's judgment and we think oh wow he seems pretty forceful to me mm -hmm. but that's not the nature of his judgment either judgment in god's purview is always to produce repentance mm -hmm. it's always to make an open display of righteousness and justice and so you know in the same way that God didn't sit Adam down right after he created him and say, let me tell you what I'm all about and let me tell you how I'm going to do it. And, you know, are you on board? Mm -hmm. He's let's connect this to the living ways of God. God wants things to be in. He wants us to be enlightened through fellowship and communion relationship. He wants the aha moments to come, not through an eloquent speech or a detailed outline, but through experiences, relational experiences in life that show something far deeper from another realm. So when, when, he, when he began to interact with Adam, he was very broad in his scope. Mm. And when he showed Adam all of creation, and Adam, as, as each creature came before him, this slow realization came to him. Well, there's nothing like me here. There's no creature that I can commune with. I'm all alone. 
And he created, I mean, this void. Again, we've got all these words that are used Noted. in Christianity so often. But he, it was like a self-realization. He can reproduce. I don't know if Adam was able to reproduce by himself. So think about it. Anyway, go ahead. I'm not going to limit what God's capacity was at the time. I think that it was the relational connection. Yeah. That was the real gap there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. There's nothing looks like me. Yeah. Nothing can communicate. I, I can't make this. I can't, I don't, I can't have fellowship. I, I think it's beyond merely how a partner or a helper in life. Mm -hmm. It's actually looking for the children. You know, mm. you know so... That's often missing the interpretation of that story. A helper, suitable mate to actually produce a culture. I can't be a father. You know, I can reproduce of his own kind, but mm -hmm. I can't. You know what's what's going on here. So, so he can't have that fellowship. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, so he can't have his own family. So, so. go ahead. You know. mm -hmm. you know, that is the the missing part because the, having a mate, a partner considered always a male or female come together, that's all there is. Actually the Bible clearly said male and female is for songs, am right? For for descendants. So for all spring. And that is a missing I mean mostly interpretation of that story. So go ahead, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. For families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, my point here is the way that God reveals things. Yes. Mm. Uh, is not as direct as we think. Mm. It, we, we want it to be that way, but anytime that God did very directly reveal things, mm. it was always misconstrued mm. by man. Yes. To, to either become... You know, I mean, look at look at the law and the the use and or abuse of the law of Moses during the time of Christ. Mm. I mean, Jesus saw that they just weren't getting it, but that wasn't that wasn't the the first time that was revealed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was revealed many times in in Israel's mm -hmm. history. Yes, throughout the time of uh, the judges and the kings, uh, the Lord through various prophets and many circumstances, you know, not only shown that light on uh, the sacrificial system, mm -hmm. uh, saying, what do you think really pleases me? Mm. Uh, but also, uh, in as it pertained to the uh, exercise of God's presence, you know, such as the, the, the dedication of the temple with Solomon. Mm. You know, Solomon said, how does the God of heaven fit in a little brick box? Mm. It doesn't seem right. Mm. And God said, well, actually, it's not right, but it's a mm. foreshadow of something to come. Mm. And so that was another, that was the second time in, in, in a particular period of history that God very openly revealed mm. his his heart in sonship mm. um, and what the abide where God's dwelling or where his presence where he wants to to, to abide mm -hmm. what does he want his dwelling place to be and, and, and if, if you notice it always, God doesn't say something to David. David realizes something. And then God expounds on the revelation. Mm -hmm. So God, David said, oh, wow. You know, like I was a, set apart as a young man. I've gone through many trials in life. Mm -hmm. God has redeemed me. Mm -hmm. God has established me. God has always been near and with me. Mm. And now I'm a king mm. and I have all these constituents. Mm. I have all this power and wealth. Mm. Yet 
God's dwelling is a is a tent. You know what? That doesn't seem right to me. <laughs> Something doesn't feel. You know, yeah. when I think about Adam again, something's not right here. Something's missing. Yeah, God. Is, and so God order. uses yeah. that opportunity to say, "Well, let me fill. Now I can fill you in, mm. because there's a there's a curiosity and a drawing in your heart." That's so true. when the disciples said, "You know, something's not right." Mm. Jesus, mm. everything you say is 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 clouded and dark. Mm. I mean, we just don't feel like. I mean, something's missing. Mm. And again, God by His Spirit says, "Oh, good. I, you know, now we have a. <laughs> now I've got a place where I can reveal something to you." Mm. And what did He reveal? And what what words did He use? What did Jesus said? He, he was like, "The prophets and the kings." They all had the same, what was it in them that God opened and revealed? What was this curiosity? What void was did God create in each of these hungering hearts and reveal a portion of his will? Yes. But here I am, a, 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 a living and a, a, a manifestation in the flesh, God in the flesh. Here is the fulfillment of what God's relationship to man is supposed to be. And but it's not just me. And because you are sensing the same void, mm -hmm. then I want to reveal something to you. Something of the Father's heart. Mm -hmm. So that what God wants to later, Paul later says, what God wants to inscribe on your heart mm. can be done. Now back to the the secretariat, you know, prophetic illustration there. Mm. A different heart. Mm. Not like the others. It was unique. Different spirit. Mm. It didn't actually, it was an anomaly. Now, in God's work, Unnatural. it's, yeah, in God's work, he creates the anomaly. It doesn't come by accident. Mm. I don't know if this is the case with Secretariat or not, but I don't think there was a genetic code there that Pass on to that was yeah. there. It was, it was an anomaly. Yeah. So you had a being that had far more capacity mm. than any other. Wow. And, and that was represented in Christ and Christ represents the body. Yes. So what's fascinating to me about the triple crown race mm -hmm. is that the secretariat had already done what no other horse had done. Mm -hmm. He had already done that. Mm -hmm. And then in the last race, he had already won the race mm -hmm. by far. And, and did the what was actually impossible mm. it, is that his speed increased his pace increased mm. to the finish mm. it like it was never going to stop mm. the horse would have gone it, so it wasn't just physiologically the, the, the heart gave him the physical ability to do it but something in the in the mind and in the demeanor of that horse would have he would have run till his heart exploded. He was just gonna do it. <laughs> so like he was made for it. Yeah. yeah. There was something that was kind of like the, the movie uh, what Fidalgo? Uh, no. Uh, oh, but that's a similar idea though. Fidalgo isn't wasn't that it with uh, Hugo? No. What's it? Viggo Mortensen? Yeah. Fidalgo. Fidalgo. It's the one where he goes across the desert. Yeah. And he has the horse that just won't quit. Mm. It's going to die doing what it's going to do. Mm. Anyway, interesting comparisons there. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, like, I'm, the reason I bring up that illustration is because we say, we're say we saying a lot of pretty sobering things about what God is doing in this time and who we are as a people. Mm. And... Um, if they're true, 
and I believe they are, <laughs> then that's the capacity that we're given. Mm -hmm. But it's also the heart and mindset that we need to carry. The, the scriptures speak of a generation not like any other generation. Mm -hmm. Psalm 24 looks forward to that generation. Mm -hmm. There will be a generation who seeks God in this way. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a little bit of a, 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 a just to zoom in a little bit, a little bit on a, some of that particular scripture. Who may ascend? the mountain of God, the hill of God. Let me ask you this. When was the last time that anyone was invited to ascend the hill of God? Well, that was the people of Israel when they were first called out of Egypt. That was the same people who said, no thanks, we would die. When actually their life was required of them. Mm -hmm. But see, Paul realized the mystery later on mm -hmm. that the Israelites would they had no vision for it. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I have been crucified mm -hmm. with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. See, they don't know what God's capable of, even though Abraham had already seen the same miracle yes. and already declared it by faith. Mm. Well, if God's going to, if this was the appointed son <coughs> and God's going to require his life, then he must be able to raise him up. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, there's something beyond death here and God made a provision. See, it, it wasn't that they could not have known that it's that they didn't believe. And they were afraid of what? Paul says later in Egypt. For those generations of people who have until this day been afraid of what? Death. death. But Jesus overcame death. Now, what is the generation both in declared, looking forward in Psalm 24? Who may ascend? Clean hands, free heart. Those are the qualifications, but we can't guard, we can't get that ourselves. Jesus Christ opened up a new and living way mm. so that there could be a generation, if they so believed, mm -hmm. who would be able to ascend the hill of God. Now, the ancient gate, probably some different and in, uh, in, in valid interpretations, mm -hmm. one of which is the human heart, mm -hmm. the spirit of man. Laying dormant within him yeah. like dead. That's right. Where the king of glory can come in and do the only battle that really matters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because why does why would I say that? Because everything in creation is pivoting on the fulfillment of what God purposed in man. Mm -hmm. That he showed us that at the very beginning. That's why he created everything else first so that everything that had been created could make an observation of what he did when he created man. That's why the apostles, that's why David and other prophets wondered at God. Who is man? You created everything. Why did you put man at such a focal point? Again, one of those divine curiosities that God says, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> now let me reveal something to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. he, he put those problems in front of the prophets. Who will go? I don't know. Well, I'll go. What do I do? Hey, what, Moses, lead my people. I don't know how. I, don't send me alone. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. So 
then in Revelation, they will not what? They will not shrink away from what? From death. Death to self. Not they, the, the fear of death is broken. Mm. I was thinking about the other day, the sting of death has been removed. Mm. And I, I couldn't help but connect it directly to the experience in the wilderness mm -hmm. when the Israelites again turned from God and he sent the snakes. Oh. The, where, where is your sting? Yeah. Yeah. The sting of death. Yeah. Has been removed. Yeah. Mm. Now, when the apostles preached the gospel, there's a lot of what I would consider to be vague descriptions mm. because so much of what they were communicating was rooted in what God had been doing for generations mm. so many times I want to look at one Paul for instance will say what God did with our fathers mm. and that's not a small chapter in the book mm. it's everything mm. from the beginning mm. that he's carrying with that statement mm. so what was God doing there's still a uh, a remnant of this that 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 is uh, very carefully guarded and maintained by the Jewish people of today, mm -hmm. and that is that they believe that they are as a nation the solution to the world. Mm -hmm. They can offer all the right technologies, all the right solutions to man's problems, and then they will teach. Well, that's right out of the Old Testament. And those it's not something they made up either. It's what God said his people would do. Now, it's been contextualized in a very different way. It is void of the power of the Spirit. And it is actually void of true sonship. It is founded on knowledge. Yes. Which unfortunately is the very thing that misled mankind mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. A wrong wisdom. A wrong wisdom. Yes. A right desire. A wrong wisdom. Mm -hmm. Was it wrong for Adam and Eve to want to be like God? No, it, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the sin. It was already guaranteed to them. It was the wrong way to pursue it. Mm -hmm. It was the wrong way to put it into practice. Mm -hmm. And it created death. The Proverbs, Solomon in his wisdom mm -hmm. declares, there is a way that seems right mm -hmm. to man. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it leads to death. It produces death. Mm -hmm. He also says, wisdom is proven by her fruit. By her offspring. Mm -hmm. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he said, come to a place of true repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance that produces good fruit. Mm -hmm. Lasting fruit. Mm -hmm. Something that comes from above mm -hmm. and not from below. Mm -hmm. James talked about that. It was throughout Jesus' parables. It was all through the apostles' teachings. That's now we're coming into the realm of the mystery of God. The mystery of God cannot include a timeline. It has to be eternal. So to say God's mystery is fulfilled because now all of a sudden man has an understanding that not just Jews, but also Gentiles can be saved in how we identify salvation mm. in modern language. Mm. Wow, what a short sell. Mm. I, I, I don't know why this came to my mind, but 
I cannot believe the flippant nature of today's Christianity. Mm. I I saw some, someone that I know that would is a professing believer mm. post uh, a, you know one of these little memes, and it basically said you know. What, what did Jesus really sacrifice? You know, and th the ultimate conclusion of this meme, it's supposed to be funny, was, well, Jesus died on a Friday and he rose on a Sunday. So really all he sacrificed was his weekend. What? That's all he gave up. That's a question. Yeah. yeah. Well, someone posted it, thought it was really funny. Um, the thing that is a, Jesus gave up his weekend for you. Uh, uh, you know, because he rose. So what did he really lose? Oh, yeah. Live in a society of irreverence. I, I just can't believe. They think that's fun. Uh, that's, yeah, they that's, think that's fun. That's weedy. Yeah. Irreverence is supposed to be funny. Yeah. yeah. And it's unimaginable that we take so lightly. That's but, more, but that's, see, that's, that's more than flippant. That's, 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 that's the... Foolish. Yeah. That's the mm. the veering off of the true that's the gospel that ends with salvation as if it is a heaven or hell decision. Mm. It's like a way that leads to death because it never produces the life mm. that God intends for man to it's, produce. It's like calling God the man upstairs or something like that. Yeah, so. So the mat upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, he's my body. This is your body. Uh, give me a break. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's like, a, a, you know. But that's the Christianity. It's so bad. Yeah. Of today. Yeah. And it's it's it is a mockery. You don't endorse that. Almost like you not be friendly to them. Be kind to them. Not be Christian like to them. Mm-hmm. They have no idea they're so worthy, so lack of fear of the Lord, not that you have grasp what the gospel, who the Lord is. It's like crazy. Like a donkey try to tell yourself you're a sheep. <laughs> Go ahead. So Paul's reference mm. to the gospel. Again, we use terminology that is, is very fluid in Christian circles. And so it's very easy for our own minds to be distracted with the flippancy of the culture of the day. Mm. You know, hey, it's already done. That's all, you know, I already I already made that bargain. I've, I've got my my stuff, you know, mm. like I was really uh amazed that the majority of uh like for Charles Finney in particular, the majority of the revival, the renewal that was taking place as he moved around was in the midst of believers. Mm. They were non-Christian Christians. <laughs> mm. they, they, they were, he would go to many towns that were Christian towns, but they basically had just received a, a blessing from a priest that as long as they made some confession to God, mm. then that's all they needed to do. Mm -hmm. So what he would determine there is he said they have no religion. Mm. Not our definition of religion. Sure. They have no duty mm. to practice God's ways. Mm. There's nothing in them that desires to be dutiful mm. to God. We don't like that word. It feels restraint, straining, and and, 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 and restrictive to us mm -hmm. but isn't that the thing that God himself mocks in Psalm 2 mm -hmm. when the nations say well let's cast off their fetters mm -hmm. loosen their chains mm -hmm. and the almighty see they're being flippant towards God and he laughs back at them but then he sobers very quickly mm -hmm. and says actually that's not funny at all. Mm. And he wasn't laughing because he was humored. Mm. 
He was laughing at the foolishness of man mm. to see it in such a way. Mm. I, I can tell you right now that if we will hallow mm. God's name, then and maintain a heart and a posture mm. of soberness mm. before God, he will increase his work in our midst yeah. doesn't need to be emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be. That's pretty inevitable mm -hmm. because we're sensitive to God. Mm -hmm. But let's not seek or judge based on that mm -hmm. part. Why? Because it's not even supposed to be the guiding part. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it. But it's not the lead. You will find that if you let your emotions lead, God will come very quickly into that place. And let you know that that's not what's supposed to be out front. If they are properly governed by God's spirit, well, he will weep with you. He will cry. He will laugh. And he will take joy with you. I got a picture of... Uh... I don't know if this is accurate or not, but the idea of emotions being kind of like the leaves on a tree that would change throughout the year and oh, grow and be beautiful and then fall to the and then turn yeah. beautiful colors and fall to the ground and then like that's a cycle and it's beautiful and the leaves are good and needed, but they're not the main thing. They also rustle in the breeze. Yeah. <laughs> they're moved by they the can wind. be moved by all kinds of things. Yeah. The the, the trunk, however, mm -hmm. the vine mm -hmm. doesn't move. Mm -hmm. The root is maintained mm -hmm. and the branches if they are so joined with that vine or tree tree trunk mm -hmm. will also be unmoved mm -hmm. you know the rustling of the wind of the spirit the moving of the earth the storms they will also i mean i drove out of my property today and there were branches all over the ground mm -hmm. they couldn't handle the weight mm -hmm. of the storm the wind the snow whatever mm -hmm. it may be mm -hmm. What's somebody going to do? My neighbor, Ted, who helps maintain the road. Well, he's going to walk out the road and he's going to pick up the branches and cast them aside. Mm. Why? Why did they fall? Mm. Well, because they were not receiving the, for the most part, not receiving the right source mm. of strength and nutrients that they had on the tree. They had already begun to weaken mm. and decay. Mm. And, you know, it's a natural process. Uh, <clears throat> So, <coughs> I want us to, to really press in to maintain due diligence to God. I was talking about duty and how that is not something that it settles well. Mm -hmm. Paul says something other than that. He says, in light of what Christ did, mm -hmm. is it not reasonable? Mm -hmm. Is that not our reasonable service mm -hmm. to God? That means this is the least mm. of what we should do. Mm. And then he, in other areas, in his epistles, describes that as not a duty, but as a joy. Mm. And as the only reason for his existence mm. is to do that work. So he has so taken upon himself through the leading of the Spirit through the revelation of the spirit, the purpose of God and the joy of laboring with God mm. that he says, well, there's not really anything else that counts. Mm. So if I'm alive, this is what you'll find me doing. Mm. I may be sewing a tent here, but I'll be preaching the gospel here. And if you find me where my heart's not beating, then know that I'm I'm okay there too. <laughs> I'm in a better place, you know, like yeah. to be outside the body is to be with Christ, mm -hmm. to be in it. Now, this is what Paul means by a living sacrifice. Happy to be done. <laughs> we have a unique opportunity to be useful to God in a way that we cannot be outside the body. Mm -hmm. That's what it is meant to be a living sacrifice. Right. Our time, our energy, our relationships, everything we have yes. for God. 
gun. It sounds for like his purpose. Idea, but actually, it's very practical because you will you give room to God. God gonna move. <laughs> and this God is the thing that God. Mm -hmm. It's the vision He cast for Israel. When you come into the land that I have promised you, know where you came from, know who brought you up, know who provided it for you, know who brings fruit to the vine, know who establishes wealth, know who gives a blessing, the blessing of life in the womb, and live with as an expression of that knowledge. Live as an expression of that knowledge. And when you do, then all nations will see the, this expression of a wisdom of life as something altogether different. And also the heaven, the, the, the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms will have to witness the wisdom of God in the way that he ordained it to be expressed. Mm -hmm. So much of what goes on in the spiritual realm with the principalities and the powers, mm -hmm. the rebellion is not just what happened initially. The rebellion is continual to oppose the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. Every nation has a better way. Mm -hmm. Every nation has a, a every age, ruling age, has had a higher ideal. But really, it has degraded through time. That's Nebuchadnezzar's vision. We go from a precious metal to iron mixed with clay. Yet, mankind thinks that the mixture is the highest and best expression that humanity has ever had to offer. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar at least was malleable in God's hands. Yeah, God has humbled him. <laughs> he did, Indeed. but he did. Yeah. And, and Nebuchadnezzar had to confess to Daniel, what? Your God is not like any other God. Your, his kingdom is not like the kingdoms of man. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar said, the kingdoms of man, well, they come, they go, the kings rise, they fall, there's wars, and there's losses, and kingdoms exist, and then they don't exist. And what was is no longer, because it's replaced by something else. But he said, God's kingdom never yeah. ends. Mm -hmm. It never ends. Not at all. That's not like anything that, mm -hmm. that's not like anything else. He, he recognized, well, God can put a donkey like me up in the throne. <laughs> he was because he, of animal. He did. He became like a beast of the field. I mean, that's a pretty amazing revelation for a pagan king to come and say, well, God is God. So when, when Paul preaches the gospel, wow. when we believe the gospel, the good news. Hey, good news. What God said he was going to do is happening. How? I mean, I'm just, it's so flippant and selling short God's purpose to say, good news. When you die, you get a lollipop. Enjoy that. You know, like we're reading here. <laughs> look at all the pictures of what, what has been illustrated or the ideas and cartoons and movies and whatever else about what, what happens when man dies. Mm. Oh, you get your heart. Mm. We all go sit on a cloud and strum our hearts. I mean, how often have you seen that in illustrations, pictures, movies, cartoons? And, and why do we think that there have been multiple generations raised under this idealization and, and imagery? And they're like, that doesn't sound like them. That doesn't sound... Why? That's not appealing. Uh, I'll go be at the bad guys. They party. Yeah. And that's those are the two things that, we, that we're selling out there. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, you know, hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live it up. Because that doesn't... There's nothing appealing about that. 
You see, the separation, I'm not talking about the existence, but this kind of separation of heaven and hell, it just means nothing. It doesn't have any value at all. The cord, would it be self-interest? Mm-hmm. It's all about oh, self-fulfillment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Christians try to say, God going to fulfill you. Relationship in the church will fulfill you. Other things will fulfill you. But rather said, no, that your old self needs to die, right? Mm-hmm. To its own appetites. And then you have a, a different kind of expectation of life, different joy in life, will be relational, right? So it will be a, a new, new life. But in that life, most likely you seldom think about yourself. It's not you, the noble, it's sacrificial per se. It's because you have a new life. And your life really make you, you have to be noble. You have to think about that. You have to think about the God of too. You know, as a song. You know, so I was, sorry, I was listening to certain <coughs> discussions because the world is so tense now, a war, everything going on. But really trying to offer solutions, um, trying to in when you know, in one ways to maintain peace, procure peace, and prevent wars, right? So, you listen to them, most uh, speculate, arguing, try to provide justification for the current standing of the proposition, but especially the, the geopolitics, you know, this new idea happened in the last year because of the two world wars after that we, we began to say hey the geopolitics cause all the troubles try to play the the game you know so you know the, the government's mind is every ruler these days right so geopolitics good or bad good or bad or ugly <laughs> geopolitics what a stupid idea I'm talking about overall in the stupid. The reason it's stupid, let me see, because it was no kingdom going to last forever. Mm-hmm. No job is going to be like a fixed puzzle. Nothing going to work like that, you know? One nation come, not a nation before. You know? no, no empire going to last forever. What is geopolitics you talking about? It's obviously it's a short sighted attempt for solution. It's a, it's a, to the best, it's a realism or pragmatism. But there's no fundamental study what a society should be, what a people are supposed to be, whole national relations are supposed to be, maybe in the fundamental way that if, you don't want to compete each other, you can have peace with them and trust you with one another, right? So by nature, geopolitics is distrust. Is that you're my enemies. <laughs> I better win on better hand. You know, it's like a child being in a kindergarten. The ruler of the world acting no better than a kindergarten. <laughs> Children, you think about it, you know, then uh, your mom, your dad send you to kindergarten, they will tell you, don't be a bully. <laughs> don't group people to be a better <laughs> group of bullies. <laughs> That's not how you want friends. You know, you know, pay attention to your teacher, you know, Carry your friends in the in the same kindergarten, then you have a better school experiences, relational experiences. Here we're both literally acting like a little child. <laughs> they don't they theorize it, beautify it, highlight it as as a as the highest theory of the world. Then you think, what in the world? Have you even learned how to be a good good kindergarten? <laughs> But everybody tried to be a bully in the kindergarten. And we cheered them out, the theories, the, the, the high philosopher, just the, the thinking tank of theorists. And they have never said, no, that human nature, that kind of person should not be a leader of the world. <laughs> should not lead anybody. <laughs> Cancel him. <laughs> How decent man to lead you, you know? That somebody <coughs> now, care about other care you know so no we 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 almost like have learned nothing from a human history now then however those ideas those philosophers those 
theories. Continue, give talk, give books, give schools, am I? To teach you the school, am I? Politics, school politics, am I? What they teaching you? To, to teach you to be a schemer, is that what they teach you? <laughs> to be a thief, a robber, that's what they teach you. To be a bully, that's what they teach you. Hmm? We're sorry. But Polish poverty is equally justifiable and civilized. I'm going to try to tell you. You don't want to be a good friend with those people because they're full of jumps. You know? Pretension and argument, the Bible said. Now turn with me to First Corinthians, two chapters. So, young people especially, maybe this is a wake up for you guys. What do you want to learn? Whom we want to learn? You know, proposing Tim and I or others. But you need to seek a different kind of wisdom. And the Bible tell you what it is. The Lord tell you what it is. <coughs> Listen, you can be a Really the father in the world? You think the best brother in the world? That's most in art, a worthwhile fulfilling. You can you can change everybody around you. That's a real power. But nobody wants to do it. And the real power. I mean, look at this. We have no blood connection. <laughs> We have no background, but when we begin to develop relations because the Lord, sure there are gifts, there are miracles, there are things, but really, really con connect our heart. It's because the Lord the, is our Father, we know we have to be serving Him as fathers. Amen? Hallelujah. When we mention that order, that transaction, Everything else is subdued, right? Or put out of the way if it exists. Hallelujah. And the commitment of the fifth one is not to one another per se in personal affiliation, profession. It's a higher commitment to a higher order, a righteous way, if you will. Amen? Hallelujah. We, we please the Father. We, we try to. Because we love the Father, please the Father, then we can help to come to endear ourselves and uh, to, to, uh, to be a help to one another with those equally God's servants, God's sons. That's how this all works. But when you seek this wisdom, it's higher wisdom. Because the world don't want to say it. Our self struggle against it. The devil never wants those things to be established, right? That kind of unity. You know, so. And it, but that's everybody's struggle I agree about. Every family, every human being, the problem is relationship. They don't know how to do relationships, how to receive and understand the relationships. In the, the day, nothing to work labor for means anything to them. But God always teaches us how to do relationship from uh, inside of us, with Him in the Spirit, then with one another. With, once with one another settled, well, you know what? Everything settled. Everything settled. It's like a river go to a dry land, everything will flourish. You know, so that, that relation with that man, come with me. This is a high wisdom. Why is high wisdom? Let me say to you why is high wisdom. Before Abraham had a uh, Isaiah as a prophet, Aaron, right? God has educated him state by state, law, Ishmael. Try to tell him, he's, uh, Abraham, you really don't know how to do relation with your family. <laughs> if I give it here, you can't handle it. You can't train him up. You're going to give him another culture, another way, which I don't want you to carry on for <coughs> all for springs, for your prosperities. I want you to honor and establish a presidents or the standard as common people that's not the common people i want to have therefore i want you to learn some serious hard lessons so when i give you the true ear you're going to start anew you're going to start to my liking to my wisdom right so and all the ones around you especially after you your own people 
will look your life an example said no what made our father Abraham different is because God has imparted a vision for him for the family and he choose to be that family and father for this family make it some tea let me see now another one David after David become a king I'm talking about the experience of Nathan we build hey we build a palace build a temple Nathan said no 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 you don't want to build a temple for me your son will be the one he will be my son now David carried that promise but what happened? David had many sons because <laughs> Solomon has not come in the picture. Later on, he has Ab Abijah, what was his name? So, Absalom, mm -hmm. one by one. And David almost like a forgot about the promises. <laughs> so David allowed those sons to rebel even, right? To, to do whatever they, they like to do. What it means, it means David had not yet learned, even he was a king, had many princes, and not learned what it <coughs> means to fulfill the vision God gave to the forefather Abraham. It takes a long time for him finally to deal with this. Oh my God, I got this songs that it doesn't have, because I have no desire to practice God's culture in part of me as a king. You can see the discrepancy. They suffer the consequences. What's the lesson? The lesson is not that they have a perfect son. The lesson is that <laughs> is that humanity has always wavered, incapable to receive God's covenant or blessing to have family. In, in the family culture, in the kingdom culture, and it takes those God chosen vessels their own life to register a warning, if you will, testimony, warning said, hold on, the thing will be given to you through so my son Jesus Christ. Abraham was a prophet, then was a king. It's a so precious, so precious. Even Abraham have a hard time to get it. Moses had a hard time to get it. David had a hard time to get it. They actually did not get it for the most part of life until they paid some serious uh, dear prices, you know? Crossed their heart, humbled their, humbled their heart, and I broke the heart, you know? So, I mean, for sure it's a humiliation. Absalom made a public humiliation of him. But it, here we go. But this wisdom, therefore, is so precious. It's a mystery, am I? Even Abraham didn't get it as, you know, until the old age. David did not get it until in the deathbed almost. Now turn with me to two chapter. In six, uh, two chapter, first Corinthians. <coughs> first Corinthians two said, we do speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, or the ruler of this age. Religious age. Geopolitics. That is in the mind of every ruler. It is a ma matter more, more than they scholar put into some system, some books to it, some word to it. It's it's always the the ruler of the world do those things. Am I right, Ben? You know, so Alexander did that. Am I right, that the great Napoleon did that? I mean, everybody did that. It's a wonderful interpreted, but we garment it differently with the academic approach. And we think that it is become a high wisdom now. And we use it unshamelessly, unbashedly to promote politics in the world. Think those things give a solution for world peace, for prosperity for the world. It's, a, it's a like a, are you dumb? <laughs> You know, are you dumb? This is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Never will produce peace if you play geopolitics. Make it sense to you because geopolitics means to maintain your nation's best interests over others, am I? To strive to build your nation's strength and expense others, am I? It's a competition. 
it's, it's from the beginning, you already passed your others as your enemy, it's not your friend. Others only is your tools, <laughs> not your partner. By nature, it's disrespectful. It's not a culture for all and respect, mutual, want to help. So why we want such counselors? Going eventually charge the course of the nation into war and conflicts to tell us how to develop relationships, especially with other nations. But that's what we do. We elect those people, cherish those people as they're capable because it's so knowledgeable. They study this and skinny all day long, study all this, and we call them historians, theorists. They said, these are the one knows how to govern the nation. <coughs> they offer us the same course what it means to, to be a better nation. Now, that's called the wisdom of this age, and the ruler of this age. That's what it is. Look at it. That's a Greek thought is about. That's a British education and modern American education is about, if you understand. I mean, only recently, I think Justin on your co-hand uh, had uh, a vision about looking at uh, the, the Library of Congress revealed as a, a den of uh, ugly things, evil things. Library of Congress, very noble, but when it's revealed, what the Library of Congress is about? Really? For the happiness of man? Really? For the freedom and liberty of all the people of the world? Really? No, I think it's far from the founding vision, you know, the founding reason this is philosopher lead us where we are. I'm talking about this because it's important for you to, to learn God can impart to us a different kind of wisdom. That wisdom is going to be gratified and encourage the self. Amen? The self-fulfillment in whatever level is rather going to reduce that pride than appetite. Now we speak God's who are come to nothing. We speak God's secret wisdom. The wisdom that has been hidden and God then for our glory before time again. Hallelujah. And you can see this kind of wisdom through the ages in the Western world, in the Eastern world, in any nation that they have a different become different ideologies, philosophies, ruling principles or ideals and cause much damage to them. That's a nation. Nation. Now I challenge those things for you is if you want to read the Bible, <laughs> to really grow in the Bible, to know the Bible, you must not pay tribute or honor to those base wisdom men. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now turn with me to Matthew 13. And this is going to offend some minds in the midst of people. <coughs> Let them be thoroughly offended. Let them be shamed to think if this offends them. This should be a joy for knowledge. This should be a sunlight to a cloudy life. You, in the deep of a corrupted thing, a hand come on and lift you up the deep. Man, smelly things, ugly things. God said, mm, I'm gonna burn it up. And you have no fear of the wrath of God. You're gonna burn it all. So how you be saved? With this consuming fire, be stimulus in Zion through one faith to anybody promoting a national pride in whatever nation, whatever caliber, whatever age. He is a citizen of the world. He is unfit for the kingdom of God. 
heart is not pure, head is not clean. Don't even ever think God going to glorify you and share his beautiful thing with you. Don't even ever think, Noah, <coughs> if a desire to be promoted is all in the world, then God going to just, hey, no problem. The upside down. In Greek clash. The song is I suppose well. To dash a subdue and overcome. Put a nothing. Put a dust. The song is great, am I? So which kept you on? That's a war. So better be careful which one you step. The more you smart, the more you want to argue, I will see you through. <coughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Be careful with a rod. Paul said to his own people, said, I will punish the one disobedient. Disobedient to what? For his own temperament? Own preference, own likings, own the ministry? No, for the gospel. <coughs> we want the authority and power. For what cause? For the prosperity of the gospel. That's all matters. That's why we want authority and power. Any other authority and power you want it, it's illegitimate. It's not essential. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you have the real authority power, which Christ Jesus said, I will grant you if you seek it. Amen. You want to touch it. He is a free gift to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then you can have true partnership, become true partners and liberals <coughs> in his business, right? In his business. That's a discipleship, this is what we're talking about. But turn to the 13th chapter. I take a notch here, spiritually. In 14. Actually, in 11. Hallelujah, I pray God begin to open your eyes. Some asking to deal with the dark forces, demonic forces. To dealing with certain, we were not standing, living down standing. I want to tell you, I think the simple story is something someone told us. How you discern a, a, a dollar? You know, how, how the cashier discern a dollar? They not study the fake all the time. <coughs> they familiarize them with the true one, the, 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 the real one, am I? So when the, 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 the finger can touch it, so like they, they always they so Familiarize the fingers of the sensitivity through the finger, right? When they come to catch, right? So just, just touch it. Touch the real, real paper of the real dollar. And instantly they know, uh, almost some, you know, I'm not sure that is cheap. And I used to count money because if somebody give some pay cash and I count it, right? So, I count the money in a very fast pace and you know, I had to learn some better than me. But one of the things you count the money is you want to learn where the fake money is. You can hear the sound, you can feel the, the texture different. You know, so I used to have the ability in the bundle of money, I could hear the sound and choo, pull it out. Oh, there's a fake one. <laughs> that one in trouble. <laughs> you know, and someone literally. You know, non-decent people, they give you pay back with the wrong money, you know, and, and uh, the normally it's not new, you know, they're going to make it old, and it's very hard to discern. So when I found one, I'm going to give a very hard time to that guy, I will literally cancel contract for them. <laughs> and I make sure the person do that, get a fire, you know, in, in, in the businesses. Don't cheat on me. <laughs> so, so, consequences. You know? So, reason 
more than they have to pay back. They have to get a, bear consequences, you know. So you can't just let this happen. That's every day, you know, every day in and out. They have to count money, receive checks. Some give you fake checks. You have to discern that. I'm just talking, <coughs> you know. So we don't, we, 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 we need to understand my point. You grow in discernment, in ability, not by busy studying, like a certain churches are. There is a church here, uh, first King Run, I went to, I thought this, they call the possibly church, sorry. <laughs> but I look at their classes, all about study, how about lettering signs, uh, all, all pieces, was, uh, they consider the bad, bad Christianity, you know. Mormon study against Mormon, free ministry, all kind of things. The pastor devoted the whole classes during this week is how to not follow those bad traditions, whatever, and call itself a pastor church. I said, this is totally bad. <laughs> you make a tradition by what? To criticize or try to tell people to discern the bad. But have you think about it? Do you really get the, the real thing? Have you think your congregation, your people, or yourself really get the whole thing? Because you really get the real thing, you will not spend time to introduce your congregation with those distractions. Amen? Hallelujah. That's, they don't need to. I mean, not every member has to know everything about what the devil is doing in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. They need to grow, take the food, the proper food, uh, take the proper root, build the proper foundation of the Lord. That's what they should be busy about. Amen? Hallelujah. And, and if you are really apostle, you need to make sure they are rooted. Make sure they have a life foundation. Make sure they can independently grow in the Lord, thrive in the Lord. That's what you're supposed to be busy about. Amen. Make sure you can disciple others in the kingdom of life, in the kingdom of truth. Amen. Think of your organization, God's culture on earth that is in heaven. Amen. That you should be about. I'm a little bit agitated because there's so much out there. And sad that destroy the God's people. When the real voice comes, nobody pay attention to it anymore. You know, it's like uh, you're lost in the noise. And then lost in the noise. Hallelujah. I want the team to pray for us. Open up your ears. Young people especially. Look before you what's really given to you. To say I'm not complacent about <coughs> is not good enough. I'm not trying to add the false pressure. You need to wow do things, cling onto those things, seriously put in practice. And before you put practice, be careful to say I know about it. I have an opinion about it. One of you, you want to know spiritual warfare. First, cast demons out. Learn to cast demons out. Amen? Amen. Learn to deal with demonic things. Because that's demons are low wreck in the enemy's cap. Amen? Hallelujah. You're not used to deal with the demon. That means you don't want to engage the reality of the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. Like you go to a wood, want to hunt something. Amen? Hallelujah. The first thing you hunt is, is a rabbit. You don't get a lion, get a bear, sit up. You first practice your skills with the little things. Amen? Hallelujah. My point is that the, the kingdom of darkness is a formidable force. They're everywhere in the world, in our life, in our inner mind, even. So, you want to be serious with the kingdom progress, which you need to practice to deal with the low rack. What's the low rack? Demons! And the rack. Then you can deal with the rulers, powers, authorities in the heaven realms. 
Hallelujah. Then you can be the front line for God's people. Amen. If you can deal with things that belong to the earth realm, how you can deal with things in the heaven realm? Amen. Hallelujah. If demons are torment us, dry us crazy, disorient us all the time, how we can rise up to be a, a, a leader, <laughs> a front for God's kingdom in the heaven realm? And what? Raise up your hand and pray. I give you the truth. Give you the, if you want a shortcut, this is a shortcut. <clears throat> Build, Rudy grew up in the kingdom reality, in the kingdom of truth. And a few out there, young people, actually have it. Most of the distractions, speculation, and presumptions are their good bro. <coughs> Lord, would you make that provision in our midst, uh, in our hearts, Lord, not just through words and declaration, Lord, uh, but in reality. Uh, open our eyes. Lord, indeed, open the eyes of the heart to see as you see. Lord, and give us an increase of your vision, your discernment, that we may be positioned by you to receive your authority and overcome and undo the works of the enemy but even more to establish and build up your kingdom mm. your house and your living ways Lord let it be considered in each heart before you truly in soberness mm. what we are about who we are for mm. what we are doing mm. Lord let it be a weighty concern for our young people mm. to make a decision to make a commitment To release, be released from every other thing so that your reign of glory can rule in their life. Lord, we want that as well. Mm. Mm. So Lord, do what you do mm. in your supernatural ways through circumstances, hardships, blessings, all things, Lord, your living ways. Mm. Lord, will you give us that opportunity again to mm. come into alignment, mm. true alignment with your heart, with your will. Mm. Lord, let the hindrances, the stones, the, the stubble, the things that are in the path be removed. Mm. That we may not only walk, but run, mm. increasing in our pace, mm. gathering in power, mm. expanding in authority, mm. and revealing your glory mm. Mm. in greater ways, mm. greater ways. Yes. yes. Lord, not just in signs and wonders. You said those will follow. Mm. The Lord through our way of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, I remember a certain caliber brother Tim's vision concerning his own calling was given. Those are things very assuring and willing to me. So that I know who he is, then we can labor in the Lord. Hallelujah. Andy, <laughs> I remember one of the visions, he holds a sword, you know, around the highway. That's back in Austin, I think, you know. And then he had a rod, you know. The rod was pretty hard for him to handle. But eventually, he took the whole rod. And the rod 
what are the staff in the in the in the bits whatever the mm. woman on the phone in the Capitol building by the way and also a school and church a, also like a, a church yeah right, wasn't like all in church in stone the whole of stone is just you know <laughs> I think so too. yeah and the capital city of capital capital of Texas you know Austin. And recently, Jesse and Nicole saw the Congress. It's like it's the same thing. Doom. I'm sorry. Am I pointing that? <coughs> there, there, there is, there is a, a God-given capacity to this brother, even in a young age. This thing is, uh, I don't think he had a clue what is going to happen in the next year. I have a clue. Because I have visitation right now. I've been taught about the American future. I was given understanding why I'm here. But you can't tell anybody about those things. But he had those visions. <laughs> it's a matter for me, matter of time, that we're going to agree, am I? <laughs> Andy, am I? <laughs> <clears throat> now we're going to labor again. <laughs> he had the rock! And the rod is not the rod that just deal with the small stuff, am I? So one seat on the throne. So he had to ask, what is that rod? Who is challenging for this son to take hold his rod? What other thing? Because of most of the imagery or prophetic understanding, that's not good enough. They're going to be real for his life. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Just like a rod is going to be real for him in the kingdom, so those things will be real for him in the devil's work. So what are they? Shall we not have the new sermon? No understanding? They are the wisdom of this world. And the wisdom of the rulers of this world. Because they want to rock. They want to rule the world. <laughs> For the devil. Aren't we clear on that score? Do not serve as God. If they are not serve as God, who are they? Are you clear? You want the rod? Be a servant of God. Fight for it. It will never be easily given, Benji. You have to overcome. No one can overcome if you don't want to overcome. Overcome what? You got to know! Amen? Uh, you got to know! What do you overcome for? Self-interest? That's a starting point. And to learn the discipline equipping the kingdom step by step. <coughs> Jesus did that to the disciples. Amen? Hallelujah. For sure it's not a cookie car process, but it's a growing progress. Integrated and all cherished by God Almighty. But one thing can never <coughs> be, 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 be ignored. Is that like David will have a heart for God. You see, they will have a heart for God is not the right, the pious man. <laughs> eh? I'll, 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 I'll read the scripture for you. They, Abraham, a heart for God is not the, hey, I'm going to be a godly man. <laughs> Beautiful father for my son. No, 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 far from that. Turn with me Hebrew. I'm going to encourage you guys with some kind of real faith. 
the faith of God is always informed and built up by the vision of the kingdom or his family culture, his culture history. And culture requires a big part. said in, in 1113, hallelujah, <clears throat> I, I, I want God to set a fire to your heart, amen, to open your spiritual eye, hallelujah, and then a hey, smash the eyes of a man's wig, amen, pew, amen, destroy that eye, Try to rule the world. An eye for the knowledge of good and evil. That eye should never be opened. But God is opening the eye of your heart by the spirit of sonship. May it be so. In 13 said, in 11 chapter 13 <coughs> said, Oh, this people. Were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the thing promised. They only saw them to welcome them from a distance. And they made them they were alien, strange on earth. People who see such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking the country they left, they would have an opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Mm. Therefore, God is not, so they had this vision of a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to call, be called their God. And God not ashamed means God created them as righteous, they are worthy citizens. For he has prepared a city for them. Fast forward to the end of the chapter 39. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us. Amen? For us. Can you make sure that is your individual faith? So that only together with us. See, will be made perfect. Their hope will be fulfilled. Continue, therefore, since we have were surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hindered the sin that so easily entangled. Let us wrong with the perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix eyes on Jesus, the author. And perfecter of this faith, our faith, who for the joy set it before him endured the cross, going to shame, the sat down, and the right hand, the throne of God, consider him who endured such opposition from a sinful man. From what? From angels? Demon? From an unbelieving and sinful man, so that you will not grow weary and lose your heart. Hallelujah. Back to 13th chapter, we'll wrap up verse so 11. He said, the disciple, the disciple comes in, asks, but why you speak to the parable, people in parables? In parable is, what word? What the word? Dark saying. Dark saying. Nah, that's reminding me. Those days I don't have a computer. I don't have a process, word process. I just walk with the Lord for about the four or Five months. I barely get baptized. But but you know there were dark things in in King Jesus King Z we actually. <coughs> so that's has intrigued me. I don't know what dark thing means. <laughs> so I'm um, saying so that's interesting. So I study thinking and uh, I don't have another version of the Bible. I mean I don't have anything. But I ask God, I wanna know. I want to know, I want to know, if you speak to others, others don't listen, 
And then you speak through this entire thing. This is a way how to know your truth, your kingdom, your wisdom. I want to know. What does it mean? Because for me, that's the key to unlock the Bible, which comes with the power. And I, I, I don't want to read any other things. I want God give me the key. And God give me some clear understanding, purely downloaded from Him. Because I don't write English those days. So I wrote down a few paragraphs on their things. And I brought them to someone those days I consider as a... Sorry, <laughs> you know that, bro. <laughs> For him, maybe he can spawn, criticize, or console me about that. I was excited. <laughs> <coughs> You know, never wrote anything about the Bible before. <laughs> and here again, okay. That's it. Yeah, I can read his mind. Those days, I can read people's mind. He said, "Are you trying to impress me?" And that brother, very good heart, he wanted to dedicate his life to teach you, but this. Intellectual pride. It's religious posture. And he can't he can understand that is something it it is like a pearl to me. You understand, I don't care about anything, I will try to use that as as you know, something so we can have a fellowship, dialogue, have to learn something from it. You know, I don't give those thoughts to anybody. <laughs> Let me give the one I thought gonna be my friend and understand what God do in my heart. <laughs> Ability to appreciate. You can teach me something. Okay. Those are a few occasions. The religious mind don't know the work and respect the works of the Holy Spirit. It never humble. It never think about what is God doing. Impossible. I was happy that God gave me a lot of patience those days in the sun. <laughs> and, and a little bit of brokenness, humility. And it gave good people for me to really learn from <coughs> but the learning was always unsatisfactory always something's missing something missing something's all right something's always required my mind had to figure it out there always is this oppression on my mind mm -hmm. i don't want to use it i just want to be a black paper please write my story please tell me i don't know anything but you continue want to add to my intellectual mind. I wish I'm tired. I'm tired to learn anything that way. And they continue to intellectualize you. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm just like, a, doesn't fit. Water, the oil doesn't fit. I'm not blaming them. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not spiritual, but it's quite a mixture. And eventually, I out the grew, I think spiritually, I have to see that. Tim, can I see that? I found why the limitation, the limitation is always the user mind. So they have such confidence in their mind, in their own smartness, they will not let God teach them. They don't wait on God. They had to figure it out. We have to figure out, they had to justify it, you know? You know, like a, you follow an alleyway, you choose an alleyway, and when God said, hold on, I'll never show you which way to go, you had him, right? So he, he used to go around, 
For sure you didn't have experience, you were justified, you made the right choice. And we, 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 we none of that will continue to justify our wrong choices, <coughs> wrong appetites, wrong way to go about receiving process wisdom. We will become a doll of a hearing. Mm -hmm. Because that's all you got. Argument and pretense. In the name of religion. The first posture is always argue. You can't argue in the case, pretend I've got it. But eventually you don't care. Harden your hearts. What does the God policy, policy happen? Why did it happen, Noah? Because man hardened the hearts. Why they harden hearts? Their weight is not approved, nor endorsed, nor blessed. So they press religion. They said they got people. So how that can happen? Jesus give the answer. They fill up with their own knowledge, am I? <clears throat> That's why be very careful with people won't always win the day with their tongue. To convince you, rather than come with you. Amen. You want to be a message of the Lord? Learn to come with people, not convince people. Difference, Elijah. Am I? Your beautiful poem. Can a very intuition. Amen. And you're good with convicting people, but you have a, very much a good mind for excellency in the English as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. You have to choose which alley we want to go. <laughs> Guys, we are narrow. Oftentimes, you want misunderstanding, persecution. But God always wins the day. You can have a hundred people convinced. They will not stay long with you. You have one heart convicted. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> then they will stay forever, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Get it, my point? <laughs> it's a conviction sin. The spirit convict. The conviction sins, conviction righteousness, the conviction judgment. That lets me go on, but 11, 11 chapter, 13 chapter. Hallelujah. If you will, I'm going to add to your, hold up your hand, brothers, sisters. Hallelujah. I want to bless you. I want to bless you. I want the heart of God. To be in your heart. The eyes of your heart be open to discern what the truly God through this loud voice, this enemy, the personalities to impart to you today. Because he really wanted to teach you. He really wanted to <clears throat> open the damn places, open the the, 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 the clock places for his spirit from the already flow in you. And once you have this flow, all your land will be healed and full of life. Then you let that will come up. So you can you can lower it down now. Thank you, Father. Jesus. To so bear with me. I'm gonna read with a little bit of passion. 13 chapter 11 said, Jesus said, the knowledge but the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has, we will give more. And we have abundance, whoever does not have. 
even what he has we taking away from him. <clears throat> this is why I speak to them in parables in dark scenes. So saying they do not see. To hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophet Isaiah. You'll be ever hearing, but never understand. You'll be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart, what the problem? The hearts become callous. They hardly hear with the ears, and close their eyes. All, other, <coughs> all else, otherwise. They might see with eyes, hear with ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn, repent, and I will make them whole. I'll restore their full life as a song of God. 16, this is what I want to to highlight, but blessed are your eyes because they see you know that is it too much to stress Benji and the witch and right the eye shoot the light from heaven what eyes do you think that is you are the eye you are the eye that was that now God said who is going to open the eye is that not our ministry, ministry to you guys? Amen. Amen. Is that too much to expect? <laughs> but unbelieving or oh, religious said, that's not true. That's not going to happen. You're indoctrinating on people, man. Let them be. Let them run around in their mind, in their choices. Um, but God said, no, no, they are my children, my son. Open their eyes, please. So which we to listen? Which one you can listen? The alleyway of your choice. You pray for us, baby. Father, we do desire to have hearts that are for you, Lord. Hearts that you love, that you desire for us. Lord, we do be Lord, our strength and Lord, where our wisdom comes from. May we lean not on our understanding, Father, but yours. Lord, open our eyes to see all that you have and all that you are. Lord, I pray that you would continue to Lord, help us to be desperate for your way. To be, Lord, a fire and a quench. There's more to life, Lord, than just the things on this earth. Ah, she. You know that, Father. Father, we have, Lord. <coughs> Lord, help us to know that as well. Andy, you are ready, brother. You make leap of bounds. God, honor the humble, honor the willing. 
to know. For it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will be your partner. Mm -hmm. We will be your helpers. We will be your true brothers, sisters, and the Allah with the lady, your family. Mm -hmm. Do not let any lie, any discrepancy come to you. God has prepared you for this. Call you for this. Once you settle, this garden will flourish. Okay. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Impossible not to flourish. Hallelujah. Because God has prepared all the former life for you for this season, for this day to come, that you found the right people, you be planted and thrive in God's garden. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Who cares that everyday life will carry us? Hallelujah. When we are planted by God in His kingdom, in His family. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Listen. Jesus. Listen. Nothing of worth in nature means anything for us. Hallelujah. Nothing. God take care of all. If we're for sure we're ignoring or missing that's so what? But God's work getting done. So I pray for for you, my dear brother. Yes, the eye of your heart will be opened. A light and of God's law of wisdom will come in like a flood. Mm -hmm. In a dark room, you open the curtains of the window and the sun is flooding in. Hallelujah. I pray that will be your life in this season. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And it will do it. Because he has preserved you in holy insistence on the pure, true, genuine things for this time. Hallelujah. May the Lord, I see, I've been praying privately for you. I see the power of sonship begin to get a hold of you. Hallelujah. A true song. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So do not be afraid. Do not worry. Hallelujah. God know how to raise up his son. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Once your son, everything break off. All the chains break off. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. All the sense inadequacy break off. Mm -hmm. Not by power, not by strength, but by the spirit that is residing in me and work through me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Not my confidence, but God. Who work mightily. His power work mightily through us. Not by words or even deeds, but by the willingness to fulfill His will. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When we are weak, He is strong. Amen. When we are poor, He is rich. <laughs> when we are unable, disabled, He is able. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What do you think a miracle is about? <laughs> miracle means nothing to do with me. <laughs> God did it. It's more than food beyond the glory. I share the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God worked. Of a miracle in my life, through my life, so he can gain the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a point. That's a point. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not doing it. He's doing it. But I'm a willing vessel. I pray and agree that he do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In this you close your eyes, you will see with you. That's enough that there was a taunting. And oppress it and depressiveness. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let the sun rise up. 
in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the Bible said, the Son of Righteous rise up healing, restoration. What healing? He said, I will heal them with my understanding. Blessed are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets, righteous men, or kings, other virgins said, other, other gospels said, long to see what you see, but did not see, to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. But I come in, you know, Lord bless these two gentlemen as well. All of you, you have vision or gifts. I want the God's vision or gift in the flood. I want you God to see the kingdom. See what God doing in our midst. I want the devil to flee. Be subdued. Exposed. And be defeated. Thank you, Father. In Jesus. You, O oh Lord, is the one who is anointed to set the captive free, Lord. We agree with your mission, Lord. We plead for your cause. Set your people free, Lord. Thank you, Father. More than that, let us fly in the promised land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Jesus, Tim, can you raise up, continue to bless our people who want the victory today? Hallelujah. Mm. I feel the power of release. If you will, you will receive authority, power from heaven. Lord, pour out your spirit in greater measures. Lord, to a willing people. And Lord, not because we want it for ourselves, but because we want to be united to you, in fellowship with you, working with you, hearing from you, in all things. And Lord, we cannot do anything without the empowerment of your spirit and without your authority to do so. Lord, let it be granted we ask of you, Lord, the authority to overcome not just the devils and demons, not just the principalities and powers, Lord, but the world. Everything that stands in opposition to you, Lord, may we be able to overcome through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that testimony of our of that the work of the blood in our own lives. Mm. Not to just be freed from sin, but to overcome the works of the devil. No, I come on. And Lord, to establish your ways in ourselves, in our families, in our community. Lord, we need the rod of your might, the sword of your spirit. And the authority of Christ Jesus. May the Lord impart the desire of heart. Mm -hmm. The gift you so long to exercise for his good cause be granted. Mm -hmm. May the fire of God begin to burn even more intensely you. Hallelujah. More for consuming the holy sacrifice. But I will give you a sweet aroma. Hallelujah. Come to the throne. Hallelujah. I pray your ministry will expand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the power of the Spirit, and you will have many testimony, many miracles to share as a minister. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You will lay hands on people, and people will be delivered, to be healed. Hallelujah. You will speak words inside of wisdom, and they will hear as the word of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I pray your discernment will be sharpened, and your standard will be righted by the wisdom of God, and you will walk in the fields of man's ways, and not be detracted, but you will walk in the highway of holiness. May the Lord bless you. 
May the Lord keep you mm -hmm. and may the Lord be more your shepherd. Bob, your captain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And you'll be at the day of when you're young. You'll follow the step every step of the way. Hallelujah. Now you will walk in with him step by step. Hallelujah. Step by step. Hallelujah. Is that not the vision? Step by step. Hallelujah. 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 I ask God to give vision to see him. Moses, when walk with a garment of a common man. But I want you to see him to walk in the garment of a high priesthood. And the garment, the captain of a heavenly host. All the armors. Hallelujah. I pray this too will come to you. Hallelujah. 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 And in the past, you used a stick to search out the way. And in the days to come, you have a sword and a rod. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the staff, if you will. Thank you, Father. Now, begin to do spiritual battle for the Lord. Not self-assumed, uninvited, but as he assigned. And you have been asked by God to know how to step in there. That's a long waiting. Hallelujah. Now rise up. Hallelujah. Learn those things. Thank you, Father. Pray with us. Learn to be a priest. Hallelujah. Learn to discharge a burden of priest because he gave your heart to have burden for many souls. Hallelujah. Already in our midst. Hallelujah. <clears throat> be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thanks. Young people, if you're there, I will pray for this too. The lay hand of I pray for you now together. That you rise up in the Lord. You allow no oppression to trust things of a life to rob you this moment. And the days will come. The glory thing God has for you. I pray the message of the gospel sonship, the gospel of the glory of the kingdom, begin to really take a hold of your heart and become a follow ground and beautiful garden for this city. In Jesus' name, never tell yourself you're not good enough, mm. or you're adequate, or you're not ready enough. That's maybe true in certain aspect, but God does not look at a man in his time frame as brother Tim share. He look at you as a, a life reserved for eternity. He can do anything. And let me tell you, young people, our friends of four years old, Jesus walked in the room, opened the Bible for them. I heard many lost their mind, God healed their mind, made them able ministers. So don't ever use your natural tendencies or capacities or experience as a, a reason to not expect God can do miracles in your life. God can do miracles. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Remember, John the Baptist was born. Before he was born, God sent a miracle. He was a miracle child. But when he met Jesus, two mothers, amen? Elizabeth and Mary. And then that John, John kicked up in the womb. What that means? What that means? Something supernatural touch a uh, born baby, yet born baby. Hallelujah. So the things God can do to you is beyond the wildest imagination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, 12 years old, he began to turn around and tell his mother, his father said, Hey, don't you know I'm about my father's business? 12 years old, Elijah. Amen. 12 years old. I do not tell me the same Holy Spirit cannot have influence over life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Now your dad was talking about some stuff. I'm telling you, when God hands lay upon me, 
He took all my physical body, my emotion, my thoughts. I literally, no part of me belonged to me almost. He was there with me. I was rolling, crying, and, and kneel down and move around. But that was not me. The Spirit of God can take a hold of man in supernatural way. The Bible said Elijah began to run, run over Ahab's chariot. No, no. Can't get rid of the dead. <laughs> he has angels from heaven and do his billions. Who are we to limit him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. 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 You're ready, Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like God, see your mind, your heart. Hallelujah. Let no nephew things come to come to you. Your sensitive heart, sensitive spirit, sensitive mind. Be guarded, be standing by the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Oh. Come on. I'm going to drag along a little bit. God is, a, is doing something in young people. I don't know. Empowerment. Hallelujah. I pray God and give you the power and more than discernment, the power over demonic powers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you going to run away? Afraid? Are you going to address it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Demons are terrified of the one walking in the spirit. Amen. Do you understand that? <laughs> Their manifestation is agitation. It's a good reason to sort them out. That's when demons are acting out, it's the time to cast out. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. They know they are threatened. They are secure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And then you dress it. And those who have impact by those who will be set free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. What do you see? You saw something. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. of them coming and crawling over bones but like the bones were not 
totally dead yet. It was mm. like a still alive mm. creature. So mm. I was trying to ask, ask the Lord what, what that was supposed to mean. Mm. Mm. Sometimes death is mm. a bit messy. Messy. Difficult. Huh? And yeah. Not pretty. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> it says something happened to him. Um, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Mamas. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You released. You're forgiven. Let be sure now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Rise up now. Hallelujah. Rise up now. Thank you, Father. Rise up now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. The Father is not interested in condemning you. The Father is interested in establishing you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So rise up now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Eating on the mother's I'm gonna start a walk. Amen. Hallelujah. To follow a walk. Thank you, Papa. It's the same in Norwegian for all of you. I see clearly the Lord want to lead you guys and you're gonna follow him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, he's walking before you guys. Okay. Work closely. And you can walk in the shadow. <laughs> in the, in the, it touches the garment almost, that's close, hallelujah. Young people, you are privileged, I'm telling you. Thank you, Father. The Lord don't do that with everybody, but He definitely want to lead you, <coughs> He want to walk with you. Amen, walk before you. Hallelujah, thank you, Father. So, I pray against the religious spirit to continue to shame you, condition you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Don't achieve his grace, but don't write off his freedom for us. Come from us, for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, tell us what you saw. Hallelujah. Uh, I saw it's kind of like a, a canyon. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the bottom, there's like a, like a, a little river. I don't know what you would call it, like a brook or something. A brook. And it was gold. The the brook was made of like solid gold. And it um, I saw it it went through a lot of different Paths through the canyon, mm. this brook. Then I saw, kind of looking into the uh, reflection of the gold, in the brook, an eagle, and it had its um, wings stretched all the way out. It was just kind of soaring over this canyon. I saw that it, it kind of focused on the eyes of the eagle. Mm. I'm not even really sure how to describe. Uh, 
บาดสอนบาดสอนบาดสอนบาดสอนสักกี่บาทสักสิบวันอังบังอังเทสุไปสิบสองห้าหนึ่งจุดสิบสองเรจิสโตร Anybody else have a a vision, Noah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just see one vision. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw the first star, our, our globe, so the Earth and our space, and um, interestingly, this was right after you told us to see vision. Um, it did kind of give the impression of an eye as well. Mm. Because uh, what I saw, in addition to the our world, was like this great band of steel, like this dark steel over mm. the earth, giving like a almost looking like an eyebrow. Mm. So it kind of gave this this uh, really simplified uh, look of an, an eye, mm. and or maybe it could have been an eyelid would be a better description. Mm. And then that's all I saw at first, and I asked the Lord for more from uh, this vision because I believe there's more behind it. And I was taken back for some reason to when you were earlier describing how you used to test the the uh, the, the genuineness of cash. of cash uh, by by feeling it. Mm. And during that time, I remember I also thought, well, two dollar bills are. Uh, also, uh, tested by holding it up to the light, mm. and I did see the world I saw in the vision, or Earth was kind of grabbed like a piece of flat paper mm. and held up against uh, the light, mm. and was revealed to be fake. Mm. Um, and when it, when it shone through this paper, it actually kind of made the world disappear because. It was just this impression on a piece mm. of paper, mm. but what had been revealed by taking away the world was the rest of this, like uh, this really odd contraption of uh, that was part of the steel band that had been over the world. And it was like these wheels spinning within wheels. Mm. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, so there was one great wheel, and then smaller wheels within those wheels that were all kind of spinning in different directions. Mm. And the vision ended when I saw that they were basically gaining speed, and the the energy that was being formed from these wheels spinning was like condensed into the very center of this mm. odd machine. Mm. And I think it was actually giving birth to a new star because there was like this really mm. intense pinpoint of the light that was being formed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the vision ended where it was basically mm -hmm. what actually happens in the birth of the star is just like a, oh. just this great um, condensing of gas that kind of explodes. Sure, sure. Um, so you're looking into the galaxy in the outer space. Yeah, this was where the Earth used to be, yeah, okay. but it was taken away and then mm -hmm. obviously the, the little mm -hmm. dark steel mm -hmm. contraption was Obliterated since, when the star was born, mm, yeah. but that's all I saw in vision. Mm. New heaven, new earth, you know. 
the old mm -hmm. order passed away. He passed away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you have? Um, I saw a. Um, Lord kept telling me garden, and, and you had mentioned it a few times, and I was, and I saw a little plot of land, like a square plot of land, small though. And it was like, it was within, it was zoomed in on this area that was within a larger garden. Mm -hmm. I didn't really see the rest of the garden, but I knew that it was within a, 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 a more. Mm -hmm. And the garden was buried in lots of things. So it wasn't like farmland necessarily. Mm -hmm. But this one plot of land looked like a little mini farming area. And it was very clear that the, the that it was very rich soil. Like it was really good soil and it had been tended like perfectly in rows. Mm -hmm. And there were little tiny shoots all growing up down the rows in perfect orders. They were all, they were all small and green. Mm -hmm with little leaves um, and then I saw that this garden was surrounded by a ring of trees mm -hmm. like in a circle mm -hmm. and I don't think this, this the tree that I saw is a real tree but the trees were they had like the trunks were like straight up huge like almost like redwood style trunks mm -hmm. but they weren't pine trees they were like mm -hmm had a big canopy like an oak tree at the top mm -hmm. so they were almost they were surrounding the garden like a like a wall mm -hmm. and the, the tree trunks were like columns mm -hmm. but they were they were they were like against they'd grown up but they were like flush with one another so it made like a perfect wall like you couldn't you couldn't I get see. in oh, wow. huh. and the canopies at the top were mm -hmm. all grown together mm -hmm. so like if you look from a from a from a distance it would look like from far, far away, it would look like one huge tree with one huge canopy. Wow. But it was surrounding the garden on the inside. Oh, wow. So that's what I saw. Garden inside of the tree. That's inside of the, yeah. inside of it, yeah. It, like, yeah, it almost looks like a huge yeah. tree, but it was made up of individual trees that yeah. were all yeah. grown up in this perfect circle around that were kind of like lined up like a fence almost. Mm. So. What yeah. a picture, man. Yeah. That's what it. it I, I was reminded. To some degrees of like you know the Garden of Eden, but obviously this is a, a new a new thing. Yeah. So. I think that's what God is gonna do with us. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus, songs boundaries up, you know. So mm -hmm. I had a, a little bit of an impression of the the trees around the outside, you know, mm -hmm. having to do with. Uh, they're providing protection yes. and and all these things, and mm -hmm. I, I specifically thought of you know the. The order that God continues to establish within us among the, the leaders and heads of house, yes. being that protection to those yes. tender shoots that yes. are on the inside. Yes, yes, I think that's a young generation. Mm -hmm. required. Well, I know Justin may have uh, something, so hallelujah. On the three. Go ahead. Anybody else have anything, reason why, before we wrap it up? I know it again delayed the meeting, but. Uh, Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God very intentionally to impart authority, power, and to open a new, I don't know the word, impart grace to young people to thrive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. But, but, uh, go ahead, brother, sister, you have any? Mm -hmm. Looks like oh. uh, he's here right now, but he said he doesn't have one. What, what about you? Anything? No, I don't have anything. <coughs> Anybody else there? That's good. Now, why don't you pray, Nicole? Wrap it up for us here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, the invitation to be your family is one that is mind boggling, to say the least. It is just of the highest honor. My hope is that we will recognize this in each of our hearts. 
we will allow humility to take over so that we can overcome. I'm just so grateful that you want us to be full of wisdom and so grateful that you want us to be enlightened. That there's so much that you want to show us. Like, come and follow me and I'll show you. Like, I just... You want to show us so much of your way, of your kingdom, of the authority there, the power there, the instruction there. The inviting of us is no small thing. Everything was purposed for it. The entire Bible was purposed to invite us into your family, into your home into an understanding of of who you are and why you are. Uh, My hope is that this world fades, not slightly, not slowly, but altogether fades. Because the more it fades, the brighter light we will see. We will not be fumbling around in darkness and clueless and confused and hopeless. The more the light of the world fades into darkness, the lighter your kingdom will show up in revelation. Glory. Help us to to rely on one another for such a purpose. May there be no offense held no holding back no fleshly emotion that would say that we don't either belong or we are not worthy or that we are have nothing to give up but the human intellect and the human emotion and the things lord that we have functioned in wrongly religiously may they die away Even if it's a death we can feel in every part of our bones, Lord, the stripping off. Whatever it takes, a sacrifice, Lord. I'm reminded even of what was spoken to me as I was being prayed over by leadership is just, there's nothing in my life or our lives that comes up That is not something the Lord is trying to do and say and speak to Mm -hmm. in our day-to-day circumstances. Mm -hmm. Whether it is hard or easy or full of joy or full of heartache, you are constantly at work in your people and in your children. It doesn't stop. It never ceases. Your kingdom continually comes. Every day we have to say yes to the question of if you will follow me. It's not even a question. He's telling us because he knows what it will mean to each of us. He knows what it will mean when we drop and leave everything and follow him. It will change everything. When he's put in his right place of the deserved glory of the deserved kingship and lordship over this earth and over our lives, it automatically will put us in our right place. We will not go without. So long, uh, there's been a fear. Like, will I go without? Will I not know? Will I not be loved by you? All of those things fall into place, Father, when we follow you. May we not be afraid of the undoing of self. May we welcome it. May we charge forward into the war with peace and joy and understanding that this battle is one that we win. Let it all fall away. It doesn't mean anything. 
And I do pray, Lord, and I do believe that you will bring the wisdom and understanding of it, of your kingdom and of your ways and of your realm. You will bring the understanding of of all of it, Lord, in your time and in your season. And we just understand that every day you are saying something to bring us to you. May we function in that. May we come together as one body in that. May we lift each other up. And you pray over each one's purpose, each one's calling in the body. May there be no fear to walk in that calling, Lord, so that we may lift one another up. So that we may function as one body coming and following you mm-hmm. and bringing you honor and glory. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, and we want to worship you and we want to be enabled Hallelujah. by you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. These things. Your name. Amen. Well, blessings, can blessings. One, can I add one real quick? Yes. Know, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah. When I was, as Nicole was starting to pray, or just before, I was, I was thinking about the vision that I saw, and I think the Lord added something on because in my vision, the the trees were grown so tightly together, and the mm. canopy was so thick that I was like, well. If that's the case, how can the garden get sunlight? Like, how is there light mm, that can get into it? Yeah. And so I, I was like, Lord, what is, what is that? Like, that's not right. Yeah. So I looked at it, and it was, because it was almost impenetrable. Like, so there's almost no way in or out. But then I did see there was a, like a doorway. There was like an area, oh. but there was light streaming out from within oh. the garden. So it didn't need the light from the outside <laughs> because there was light on the inside, which oh, also wow. kind of. And, and then Nicole pray, started praying about light. Oh, yeah. and, and Noah's vision also was this, you know, this formation of this new star, this new light yeah. coming from within this right, other yeah. thing mm. that, did, that that kind of I would assume makes the old the sun and the older form mm. of light unnecessary or not not the right one separate. Mm. So anyway, I just want to mention. That. That's beautiful, brother. That's beautiful. Oh God. God bless our vision. May it be true for us. Amen. You be the light in our midst. You be our canopy and protection. You be the abundant life for us. And indeed, let our inheritance fall into pleasant places. May your planting thrive in this beautiful garden. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May each one be strengthened. I think we are supposed to see you tonight, so not far away. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours. <laughs> Seriously. Blessings, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sure, buddy. Yeah. Mm.